Hey guys, this is Jules. Just wanted to share my project that I did for Prima's uh, Build a Page. It's called BAP. They, I don't know, the abbreviations there never defined for me. So it took me a minute to figure out what the BAP meant. <laughs> so if you see that on Prima's uh, blog, uh, they do this every month. They do like a BAP and then something called a triple P. I have no clue what that is either. Um, but anywho, I did... Uh, create this layout for the build a page for the month of October and I have already emailed them with the pictures and stuff so I'm just sharing with you guys the actual layout that I made with uh, some of the stuff so I started out with a 6x6 six six paper pad and I was thinking how am I gonna do a 12 by 12 layout with a 6x6 six six paper pad uh, so what I had to do was a collage type thing so I just tore up a lot of different uh, like three different pages from the the paper pad and uh, did this collage and I did some gesso so I did a little bit of mixed media I ended up using a few of the older stuff like some of the burlap type of flowers that are here you see there's two here and, and one up there and I used uh, some flowers there and this one here just like the flowers I think it's chiffon or something so here I used like some thread a lot of like little a jumbled bunch of thread and one up here for the little bird. This is a Maya Road chipboard piece. I don't have any of the Prima's resin pieces, so I didn't use any anything uh, from that particular collection, like the resin stuff. I have some charms, and I had some journaling cards, and I have the chipboard die cuts, and some paper, and one of the floral sprays. So I really like how this came out. It's really pretty. I, really I like it a lot. One of the biggest mistakes that I did, though, was... I wasn't taking as good care of the photo as I should have and I like drizzled some gesso on there and there's some Lindy Stamping sprays and so yeah I stained it a little bit but it's okay from far you can't really tell and in the photos you can't really see too much so I'm, I'm okay with that so I really like this so anyways this is what I created and just wanted to share that with you guys and I have the tutorial as I was making it but of course because it's, there's so much to it um, and I don't like to leave information out I want to be able to share with you guys exactly what I used and what I did but it was going to be way way long so there's a lot of stuff that I didn't share if you guys have any questions I'll let me know and um, again detailed pictures over my blog thanks you guys for watching here comes a tutorial Jewel signing out of the jewel box bye everybody so this is the tea time paper the six by six paper pad and I'm just going to pull out two of the sheets uh, I'll pull the other one later on because I didn't realize that I wanted it yet until I realized that I wanted it <laughs> So really pretty paper though, you guys. A lot of beautiful soft colors and then some dark chocolatey stuff. And yeah, really nice. So I just started to just tear paper up and um, I initially put the first piece down with Mod Podge. Uh, but I remember that I wanted to see how the Studio Matte Medium worked and then I put that away and started working with the Matte Medium. And my findings were that this that piece right there that I used the Mod Podge on actually curled a lot more than the rest of the paper. So I didn't like that too, too much. I had to really mess with it and keep messing with it. So um, I think I will continue to try working with the Studio Matte Medium and see how it works with other projects and let you guys know. It's a little bit thicker. Um, it's not as uh, watery as the Mod Podge is. Um, I like that there's a variety of Mod Podges, but I wanted to try something different. And I had gotten a question a while, a while, a while, a while ago about how the Studio Matte Medium worked. So I'm going to keep using it and then I'll let you guys know a little bit later. So I just did a lot of tearing and stuff and glued them down in different areas. Um, kind of try to fit them together, kind of puzzly like, but not. There's the third piece and it's very floral, very, very cute paper. Um, yeah, and I have a couple of these paper pads, so I, I'm, it's going to last me quite a little bit. I should probably look into getting some 12 by 12s if I can, but um, they're kind of sold out almost everywhere that I looked so far. But anyhow, I am gluing down a couple more pieces there and just putting the heat tool on it to dry it up really quick. And I'm going to add some little bits of color with those paints and some gesso and um, do a whitewash. And this is the only way that I've seen in other tutorials that it kind of blends and brings to the page uh, it makes it more cohesive, makes it look like it's like the page just came like that. Uh, like the design is, is actually a, a collage uh, page. So I really like that there's a little pops of color. So I wanted to just use, um, do a whitewash with it. So I wet my paper towel and to eliminate brush strokes, I just blotted around. So here's a three 
paints that I grabbed. One is a cinnamon brown, and then a pink, and then a sage green. So I just spread it just a little sporadically in different areas. And this is what helps bringing the page to become more of a one, one design. So I'm just whitewashing some of it off because I didn't want to cover it completely. Of course, I'm kind of, I'm with a, the wet paper towel, kind of washing some of the white off, except for one spot I'll show you in a second. So I'm just trying to build some texture with some of the gesso there and then add some more spots of color with my finger. And uh, so yeah, you can see some of that there. Then I added a few more bits of that, that cute third paper, that little uh, floral piece. Just gonna glue that down in some areas and uh, do a quick little whitewash so that it doesn't look so out of place. Still using the the studio matte medium here. This the gesso. I'm going to do a, a nice big square in a second, um, which is going to be kind of the like the the mat or the area where I'm going to put the actual photo. So adding some little little bit more. Here it is, right there. So I did add quite a bit in just in that one spot because I knew it was going to be kind of covered. So adding some little bit of color, a little bit of pink. Now for some cotton candy pink from Lindy Stamp Gang. Beautiful little color. Love this. And I wanted it to be drizzly. So I, I that's why I pulled the paper up like that. This here, I just wanted to speckle. So I just shook it off of the, the little straw piece. So and a little bit of it running down. So just put some heat tool. Use, using my heat tool, I just dried it up real quick. This is the actual mat for the photo that I whitewashed and I distressed it really good. Did a little bit of blotting there too. And I'm gonna put some of the cactus gold on there because I wanted some shimmer. And I didn't use the Lindy's on everything, but I did use it on uh, certain areas. I like doing this part, this is fun. And it, you know, it's, it's kind of easier to do it when your paper is a little wet still. So I'm gonna add some of the gesso on the edges to give it that shabby look and you know I got this is one, like my first spot of, of gesso right on on the photo Ugh, I was so mad at myself <laughs> so I cut slits um, in the corners of this paper and I, it was a six by six but I cut it down to like a five and a half so and these pieces here I'm gonna use to layer uh, layer with so I'm going to use this pink one here too just distressing them all the edges getting them all roughed up and and stuff and I don't ink any of this stuff because it's a shabby chic style layout so I'm doing a lot of whitewashing and a lot of distressing of the paper itself again with a, I think I'm using a wipey at this point adding some more gesso um this is the die cut piece uh, pieces this is from the almanac I believe the Almanac uh, collection. So this is the die cut chipboard pieces for that collection. So I use what I have and, and a lot of the colors really just went together. So so this is what um, I'm going to use these pieces here. I'm cutting out five little rectangles for the word sweet for my banner. So I'm just going to distress the, the edges there. I'll do the pink ones later on. I always do little bits here and then I put it put it aside then I do another bit of something from the project again and then I put it aside and then I do something else so it's never really just continuous. <laughs> so instead of putting the paper down I just add it to the back of that photo. So here's a collage sheet that I'm going to distress the, the heck out of it getting it all nice and rough on the edge and I'm going to put it down on this gray cardstock. This is American Craft cardstock. I love American craft cardstock. I get it all the time from Craft Warehouse, so really love it. So I'm gonna tear and do my paper rolling and distressing here. And this is thread, quilter's thread, and I grabbed a bunch of it up, made a little ball, put it aside for now. <laughs> Here's my cheesecloth and some vintage lace that I found, I think it was a yard sale, if I'm not mistaken. I'm figuring out where I want to put it. So here is where it's going to go for now. But of course it looked too muted. Um, and I end up coloring it. There's my heart. The embellishment. This is what it looked like before I covered it with the floral vine. Here's a journaling card. This is from the Nature Garden Collection. And I added some gesso along the edges of that journaling card. And my heart. 
uh, it's covered in muslin, strips of muslin. So I un uncurled these little stems and recurled them because I wanted them to be tighter and more cohesive. <laughs> so I'm going to use the winter jasmine gold again, and I'm going to paint two of the flowers on this vine because I'm wanting this gold to pop, and I use it in different areas of the layout. This is the lace, and I'm using that same winter jasmine gold on it, wetting it down, and then I'm going to add some paint, some vintage white by Folk Art, and it keeps it yellow, but it just tones the shade down just a little bit. And here is the vine, and I'm just going to wrap it around the heart, and using some of the green uh, wire stems from flowers that I, I that I didn't use. And I use it to, to anchor them down to my heart there. Just curling the bottom, seeing where I want it. The journaling card gets cut in half there. I'm going to put uh, one half on the top and I'll put the other one on the bottom. So it's stuck right there. And then I'm going to tear up the cheesecloth just a little bit to give it a more tattered look. Stretch it out. It's got that big hole there in the side. And here is the, see that extra piece that I cut off? I'm gonna use that later. So here I'm just gonna edge the gray cardstock with the gesso, giving a little whitewash. Uh, it'll be too stark gray if I don't do that. So I just had to have some whitewashing in there. So I'm using my ATG and then I'm gonna use some liquid, uh, my Helmars 450 on here and uh, like I've mentioned to you guys before this do, this does not cause your papers at all I don't care which paper it is it does not ripple or pucker at all so it laid down really nice on my cardstock and too it was curling on that one bottom left from the Mod Podge so I needed to anchor it down a little bit so and here I'm just curling some of the edges a little bit more and my cheesecloth is gonna sit right here on top of my lace I think it looks pretty good right there. So now I'm going to start anchoring down because I've decided that's where it's going to go. That's where it looks best. And using my detailed fine tip glue gun to get in there. I'm going to use the 450 again on this side uh, for the photo so I can anchor it down. And I'm just going to tuck that down there. And I always use the back of my hands, or try to remember to use the back of my hands. That way I don't stain anything. You see my hands are filthy already. So here's one of the charms from the um, one of the Prima charm vintage trinket packs. I think this is the tea time from the tea time collection. And adding gesso again on here. And I don't add so much later on, but I did add some more when I added a couple more flowers on there. So just using a jump ring uh, to add to the chain link that's going to hang from the bottom of that heart. So. So I'm using a, um, there's a pearl with the, some bead caps on it, the one charm there, and I'll put another charm later on. So here's a little a little bit of folk art paint. This is in a gray, and I add just a tiny bit of water because I don't want it watery, I want it thick. So there's a big drop there. So I want it to give that shabby grunge kind of a look with the gray. So I wanted the gray to pop as well with the, with the yellow um, on this layout. So I do spray a little bit with water. I flick the back of it to pop the bubbles because there was bubbles in the paint and I didn't like that. Sorry it's a little fast here you guys but as you can see it's a 20 something minute video and I didn't want to do it too slow. So This was the cactus gold again and I added it a little bit to uh, right where I, I added that paint. The gray paint there so just dried it up. And here's the pink sheets that I'm going to use. and. Um, for my banner because I wanted to do two layers of uh, the paper and these were for, uh, scraps from what I had cut earlier so this is the thickers that I was using uh, from American Crafts so I'm going to pull out for the word sweet and you can see it's, it's already got some paper on there it's uh, that olive green so I used some gesso on there but I did do it three times and I'm going to set it over to dry while I do this I did about four, four or five strips of this particular uh, design punch on on I think this this only sheet of paper, I think I got four of them, four or five out of the out of them. So a little bit of whitewashing again, and it seems like the gesso is a tiny bit porous, so it helped when I did this here and I sprayed it with some more winter jasmine gold. I wanted that gold that golden yellow to pop from the page, so 
along it's all up along the edges all these little uh, deco shells all the way around the page little it's just peekabooing off off of the where the where the paper's distressed and folded back so I'm just peeling off the not plastic but the paper because these are self-adhesive chipboard letters so it's not gonna stick really good if I leave the backing on it so I peel the back off and then I hot glue them down once I got the the alphabets glued down to the gray paper I was able to get it glued down to the pink paper and then with this chain here I just sewed earlier um, I just poked a couple holes on the tops of each of these little squares added jump rings to them I actually switched these out for some bigger ones but I ha I've got two jump rings on each of these and I just string through some of the chain so it's just hanging off of the chain as if it's a charm and it looks pretty 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 cute I really like it so normally what I do is I glue down the la the first letter and the last letter and then kind of fi I can figure out you know how I want it to swoop wherever in whatever corner and then it's easier for me to just um, evenly uh, settle the rest of the letters so it'll just sit there now so I'm going to add these peach peachy pink uh, wall roses from wild orchid crafts and just adding it to my heart there there's the scrap lace that I was told you that I was going to use again so I wanted the heart to frame their faces and you can see that where I tried to, try to rub the gesso off of Alyssa's face <laughs> there's a little story on my blog um, I was telling the story about the picture on my blog uh, when I took the picture and these are cousins Anna and Alyssa they're two weeks apart beautiful girls are beautiful girls mine and my my sister my brother and, and my sister-in-law and here's the little nest I am going to use the thread here uh, to sit underneath my uh, hydrangea or is it hydrangea geranium I can't remember now gosh I'm I'm my mind's blank okay so a couple of chrysanthemums in the top corner there with one of those peach flowers and um, I also added one of the Prima's hydrangeas there with a pearl in the center and here's some wild roses that are a cream or a beige color and I just use that winter jasmine gold and I think this is where I did splash a little bit on the photo but whatever it's done <laughs> so I did about three or four of these and I scattered them throughout this is a Maya Road chipboard piece uh, from the packets and um, I have those on my blog and I'm just gonna dab with my finger the corner of uh, this is one of the Prima's oh that's this is the tea time stamp for the collection and I just stamped the wing with the with the paint and I, I do that I like stamping with paint it looks pretty cool sometimes so these are some floral sprays they're in uh, little chunks like like bouquets of of berries so I put them in different areas for that pop of white so I'm just peeling back the the paper off of the chipboard piece and that way I can glue it down a little bit better so I've got two one on top of the photo one below the photo and here's another little nest of thread that I'm making for the chipboard little bird my road bird that I painted in pink and that peachy pink color and I also sprayed down with uh, winter jasmine gold so I'm just gonna park him up there he'll be perched up on the on the cherished die cut I'm just pulling some of the little threads out so here's some uh, organza ribbon and I just kind of curled it a little bit more and anchored it down just to trellis up the side of of the layout and um, I really like doing that every now and again adds some dimension and some softness to the layout and here's a button from an old I think it's from nature's garden uh, paper collection from I think last season so so using uh, actually this is also from nature's garden collection the alphabet stickers I'm using um, here to just spell out like sisters because they are they act like it when they are together so I'm just distressing the edges really well and I'm going to back this piece with another gray piece that I'm going to stamp with uh, one of the borders or one of the stamps from the collection here I'm just gonna I'm just doing it for the design of it I wanted some something on here or something I want to use a stamp somewhere on here so that's why I used it 
And it kind of gives a nice little look there sitting behind the little sentiment. Perfect in that little spot. I really liked it right there. It looks awesome. Gluing down some of the cheesecloth. Here's some flowers and curling some of the paper. And now I'm going to add some gesso to uh, the last bits, just some areas that I felt like needed it just to kind of give that last bit of texture. Although there's already some in some areas, but I wanted to add a little bit more. Like here on the sign, I didn't have any gesso on that. Nor on the sentiment that I just added a second ago. Now for the canvas piece. Um, I grabbed two feet of that vintage lace there. And I'm going to just spray it down with some of that same winter jasmine gold. Just for the color. And I end up spraying some water on there too. Then I'll do the whitewashing with some vintage white by Folk Art. Again, to do the same thing, just to tone down the shade. I want the, the color and the brightness of that yellow, uh, but I want to uh, kind of give it an older look too. So here I'm just going to cut it in half because I'm, the canvas piece that I'm using is not a wide, like one and a half, two inch edge, as you can see here. Now I'm just using some nice, thick, studio medium and I take it all the way around and stick the lace down and it stuck really well. Once it dried I trimmed it off, added some gesso and it was ready for the layout. It looks really good, really cool texture and stuff too. So I'm just adding my Helmars 450 and I'm sticking down the layout. Just sticking my hand underneath it so I can press down on both sides and then uh, when I see that or feel that it's drying up a little bit, then I'll go in with my fine tip glue gun and seal it all the way around the edges. And it holds really, really well. And that's it, you guys. That's pretty much the layout. For detailed pictures, head over to my blog. Link is below. Bye, you guys.